In this video, we're going to talk about the retail inventory method. So the retail inventory method is a way to estimate the ending inventory for a company. You use something called the cost of retail percentage, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. And the reason that people like the retail inventory method is that it's quick and it's cheap. It doesn't cost a lot of money. You don't have to do a physical count of the inventory in order to get an idea of how much inventory that you have on hand. So I want to give you an example and it'll show you how this cost of retail percentage is used to calculate invent ending inventory. So let's say that you have an Apple stand and you sell apples for a price of $1 per apple. Okay, so you sell these apples for a dollar a piece, but the apples cost you 40 cents each. So you buy them from a farmer for 40 cents and then you turn around and sell them for $1. Okay, so that's your business, and now we're going to calculate this thing called the cost of retail percentage. And all we're going to do is we're going to take the cost per apple, which is 40 cents, so I just got 0 0.4 there, and we're going to divide it by the retail price, which is a dollar an apple, right? So we're going to take 0 0.4, and we're going to divide it by 1. And then to convert it to a percentage, we're just going to multiply by 100, okay? So 0.4 divided by 1 is 0 0.4. And then we multiply that by 100, and that's going to give us 40%. Okay, so 40% is our cost to retail percentage. Now, I'm going to show you how that's used and why that's even relevant in, in a minute here. So let's start first, though, by recognizing that we start with a beginning inventory of apples. So at the beginning of the day, let's say you have $80 worth of apples in your inventory. But then you also go and you purchase some additional apples, right? So you start with $80 worth of apples, but you purchase an additional $400 worth of apples. Okay, so you started with $80, you bought an extra $400 worth, but then you sell some apples during the day. You sell $350 worth of apples. So now we need to figure some things out. We need to say, well, how much inventory, without us having to count how many apples are left, how do we have some idea of what is the value in ending inventory of our apples, okay, without doing a physical count of the apples. And you might say, well, maybe we just subtract out the 350, but we can't do that because, remember, this 350 has been marked up, right? We don't sell the apples for what they cost. We sell them for a dollar a piece, even though they cost 40 cents each. And that's where this, this cost of retail percentage is going to become important. But first, we need to say, how many apples were available for sale during the period? Okay. Now, we started with $80 worth of apples, and then we purchased $400 worth. So if we add those two together, 400 plus 80, that gives us 480, which is the total amount of apples or goods, however you want to think about it, that were available for sale during the period. Okay, so there was $480 worth that was available during the period, but now we need to subtract out the cost of goods sold. So we need to think about what was the cost of goods sold, and this is where this cost to retail percentage is going to become important. So we're going to take our sales, right? So remember our sales was $350. So we sold $350 worth of apples. And so then we're, so I'll just put here, that's our sales. Now we're going to multiply that by the cost to retail percentage. So cost to retail, so we're going to multiply that by 40%. Okay, so 40%. That's why we calculated that cost of retail percentage before, and that tells us that our cost of goods sold was $140. $140. Now, we take the goods that were available for sale, which is $480. That's what we started with, what we purchased, and then we subtract, and I'll just put in parentheses so you know we're subtracting, we subtract our cost of, of goods sold. Right? We're saying, look, we sold 100 apples that cost us $140 during the period. Okay? So if we take 480 and we subtract 140, that gives us 340. So without even having to count our apples and say, okay, how many apples do we have left in the cart? We can just use the cost of retail percentage and get a quick estimate it was really quick, it was really cheap, and say, hey, we have $340 worth of apples in our ending inventory. So if you say, hey, this is a quick and cheap method, why do companies even bother doing an inventory count at the end of the year and so forth? Well, even though it's quick and cheap, it's not the best method. And there's, there's several issues. And one is that 
there could be a problem if the cost of retail percentage, it, it, we, we basically need it to be consistent across products in order for this method to be useful, for it to have any kind of value. Now, here we just had one product. We just had an apple. But what if we were also selling bananas, right? So if we were also selling a banana, and then we also had another product was a pear, uh, we also had another product that was an orange. So we had four different products, and maybe, maybe the cost of retail percentage is different for each of these products, right? Now, we were assuming that the cost of retail for, for the apple it was 40%, but what if it was 60% for oranges and 30% for bananas? And we can't just go and use the one percentage across all the products. So this could create a real problem. So it's only useful if, it, if the cost of retail is consistent across products and also consistent over time. So the cost of retail percentage, we gotta make sure it's not changing over time because if for some reason, let's say the apples this year, the cost of retail was, was 40%, but before, it was 30% or it was 60 or something like that. So if it's constantly changing, which makes sense, right? Because we're not gonna be buying our apples at the exact same price every single day for years, right? Costs are going to vary over time. And so when they vary, then the cost of retail percentage is going to change and that's gonna make our ending inventory, uh, the assessment that we use with this method, it's gonna make it a lot less accurate.